So this group is now five years old and both of you were there from the start. Talk a little bit about the impetus for creating the Women in ETFs group. Yeah, sure. So it was really the realization that there was a gap in this very, very fast growing industry segment as it relates to connectivity. So as you know, there's different parts of the ETF ecosystem, whether you're on the capital market side as an authorized participant or market maker, an exchange, an ETF issuer, an index provider. And in order for the industry to grow and thrive, those pieces have to be connected. And so there was a group of women who really dedicated themselves to putting this group together and taking a leadership position and recognizing excellence and fostering that connectivity and really creating a community mm -hmm. which would allow people to um, you know sort of plug into any one of those areas and um, ascend from there. And Jill, your reach has grown by leaps and bounds. You're now up to almost 5,300 members, yes. as we mentioned, across different cities. You founded the Chicago chapter and countries as well. There are also plenty of male members too, I understand. There are. I mean, I think one of the things that we realized when we kicked this off was that quite immediately we realized there really was a gap. There was a need for what we were providing as this outlet to connect, support, and inspire. And very early on had some very important male sponsors of the organization and realized if we didn't have them involved, we were really only having half the conversation. So we were proud that over 20% of our members globally are men. And we actually, for the first time in 2019, actually it was 2018, had chapter leaders that were men, both in New York and in hmm. Chicago. Got it. Now, I guess the big question here is why is the ETF world seemingly more inviting to women? Uh, here's one explanation from Maria Chandoha. She's the CEO of Charles Schwab Investment Management, by the way, the firm's second female CEO. She told Bloomberg a couple years ago that back then, the ETF business wasn't considered sexy and people had questions about the viability. This wasn't necessarily the sphere that men flocked into, so women were able to make it on the ground floor and grow in rank. So, in other words, it was new, it was untested, it didn't have the legacy of the old boys network. Yeah. Do you agree? Is that the way you see it? That's exactly right. So if you think about financial services more broadly, it's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years, right? So de facto, there's sort of an anchoring in that legacy. So given the fact that the ETF industry is rather new, a couple decades old, it allowed uh, women to get in on kind of on the ground floor with an entrepreneurial or an innovative spirit and to really plug into the different parts that allowed them to learn and grow within that ecosystem. And as the industry's evolved, you see lots of new issuers coming into market allows those of us, myself included, that came in on the ground floor to grow within the industry as more and more issuers have come in and leadership opportunities have presented themselves. Also in the passive world it seems like there isn't an emphasis on superstars so maybe yeah. men shied away from the passive world and sought to make themselves superstars in the active world. And there yeah. were definitely opportunities that were presented to women along the way in all aspects too from investments yeah. to marketing to sales and everything in between. Yeah and it's really incumbent upon us within our our, um, you know, our organization, which is on, as you said, five continents, uh, 12 countries, to do things to continue to promote the um, equality and inclusivity. Like one of the things we're most proud about is on International Women's Day in March, every year we partner with UN Global Impact, UN Women, Sustainable Stock Exchange, uh, Federation of Exchanges, and we um, most recently, this year, rang the bell at 75 stock exchanges around the globe, either the opening or closing bell, to continue to amplify mm -hmm. this message around sort of inclusivity and equality, which is important within the industry and specifically in ETFs because we have such a high concentration of women. Absolutely. Now, both of you have day jobs that are pretty all-consuming. Sharon, <laughs> you're the CEO and president of AIG Life and Retirement Funds. Jillian, you're the head of U.S. ETF distribution at J.P. Morgan Asset Management. How much time do you guys spend on women in ETFs versus your regular job, or do, do they work together they, hand in hand. Precisely, Scarlett. It, they, they really do go hand in hand. You know, I think about the opportunities that Women in ETFs has provided to well, 5,200 people around the world to take on leadership roles. We have a lot of uh, people that make up the leadership of Women in ETFs around the world, and it provides them the opportunity to lead and potentially provides them with opportunity to lead in their own organizations as a result. So I do believe, while we are all volunteers and have day jobs, I do believe that the opportunities we're given through Women in ETFs have 
have helped progress a lot of careers. And we also are proud of the fact that we've created for the media and for conferences um, the ability to tap into our network for, with a speakers bureau. So yeah. we've very specifically curated and chosen industry experts um, who are media trained on specific topics. So then when there is a need for um, some sort of discussion on an AETF issue that we can put forth this list of, of females who um, have this industry expertise. So the Speakers Bureau has been very, very helpful to the industry in order to promote diverse thought across a particular subject matter.